Okay, so for the first step here, we are to add 50 grams of potassium hydroxide dissolved in 100 mils of water that is at the boiling point. And as you can see, it is just starting to bubble there. So I just um, used the thermometer to check the temp too. It is at 100 C. So I'm going to go ahead and add this slowly to our bismuth nitrate. Stir bar. All right. This will produce bismuth, uh, bismuth oxide. There we go. Come on, there. stir. All right. We need to let this stir in heat for 15 minutes, so I will come back once that time period has elapsed. Okay, so we had a storm come through that kind of put a halt to everything. Um, I had to shut everything down for a little while. Um, everything's set back up here in the shed now. Um, you can see though that we've got our bismuth oxide here. It's very nice. It looks exactly like bismuth oxide should look. Um, I've reheated, ow, reheated that, so we should be good to go. The next step in this synthesis is to add 20 grams of potassium ferrocyanide, not the ferrocyanide, you want the orange stuff, not the yellow stuff. Um, and it said that it needed to be finely powdered, so I ground it up using a mortar and pestle. So here we go, we are going to add this over the course of 10 minutes to oxidize the berry, or bismuth oxide. All right, everyone, so now that all of the potassium ferrocyanide has been added, the textbook says to let this stir for five minutes, and then we are going to add water to it, and that will give us our initial product, which we will use to get our final one. You can see that the color of the bismuth trioxide has completely changed. Um, I don't know if it's showing up well on the camera or not. In real life, it kind of looks like a brownish green. And you can definitely see where the solution has gone yellow, where the or ferrocyanide has been reduced to ferrocyanide as it has oxidized the bismuth trioxide. So I will come back once that time has elapsed and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so the prescribed five minutes has elapsed. We're now going to add our 400 mils of water to this. Stir it very vigorously. We'll make sure we get it well mixed. All right. Now, we have to let this settle out so that we can decant off the um, supernatant. And then once we're done with that, we are going to rinse our, um, our precipitate. And then we will go on to digest that with nitric acid and water. So, oh yeah, okay. It's settling out nicely and quickly. Gotta love those heavy metals. 
know if you can see it. Oh yeah, it's all over the bottom of this thing. Look at that. Pretty fucking cool. Stupid piece of shit camera. All right. Well, I've got an old container here. Um, what I'll do is I'll come back once I've decanted this mess and um, I'm ready to rinse it. Well, I'll rinse it and then I'll come back when I'm ready to start the digestion. Okay, everybody, here is our product. I've still got to rinse it, but I wanted you to see it. It is a black looking solid. The um, supernatant is a vividly yellow liquid. So, totally expected for. Um, ferrocyanide okay everybody here is the product that has been completely rinsed it's not the final product but here is our stuff that needs to be digested with the water and nitric acid so I'm gonna put that up here and add the water 200 mils of water 20 mils of concentrated nitric acid. It did not specify concentration, so I am just going to use my normal concentrated stuff. Yeah, all you fucking bugs flying around here on my goddamn lights. How you like the smell of that stuff? <coughs> Damn. <coughs> I don't even care. It's like we'll all burn together. Arrgh, I hate the fucking bugs. Okay, stir bar, you need to fall in line, seriously. Alright. So now, oh look, it's already starting to turn color to purple. Or purple-ish. Okay, I'm going to cover this up with my broken pane of glass, because that fucking hornet that flew in here made me jump and then knocked it off the damn bench. Fucking bugs. Anywho, I am going to let this go for an hour, and I will come back once that time has elapsed. Okay, the digestion step is complete, so what I'm going to do now is take this off the heat, and I am going to filter it. I am going to try just simple gravity filtration, um, since it looks like the particles are kind of small, but uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> So here we go. It is the next day. I let the product dry in the desiccator over three angstrom molecular sieves that I had just freshly charged um, the other day. And um, this is the result. You can see it's not purple like the textbook said it would be. It's definitely more of a brown. At first, I was thinking, ah, oh, shit, man, I fucked up. You know, I shouldn't have filtered that through paper filters with a cotton plug, even though it was an extremely fine precipitate, and it was the one reason the yield sucks so much is because it was just very difficult to filter off there at the end. Um, I would recommend using something that is a bit more robust so far as filtration. Um, I don't know. Uh, you would have to fool around with it in order to make it more efficient or just do it in bigger batches. Um, the fact that my bismuth um, nitrate crystals were so incredibly hydrated, um, this also makes would make sense if the yield would be low because just because, I mean, when you take the amount of bismuth nitrate that was actually in those crystals and 20 grams of them, it's probably less than you would have in 20 grams of commercial bismuth nitrate pentahydrate. So, anywho, um, like I said, I thought that I had failed until I decided to try to burn one of the filter papers and see what happened. Now, normally these fucking um, coffee filters, they do not burn well especially if you have used them to filter stuff and they've been dried and then you try to burn them they tend not to burn well that's not the case here as I will now demonstrate alright here we go using the suspected arsenic trioxide to hold this down we're super big on safety here right kids um, seriously though this does burn kind of quick if confined 
I mean, this stuff is made to be a source of oxygen. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty decent oxidizer, so just FYI. Here we go. Watch this. This is not normal for this fucking kind of paper. <laughs> we got some nice yellow fumes coming off of it. There we go. Yeah. Chew that bitch up. Nice. So, that doesn't look like failure to me. That looks like success. Um, I mean, again, as with all of my videos, you all, this is the first time I've ever made this. That's virtually always the case. You guys get to see it as I do it for the first time. So, again, when you're absolutely not repeating this because that is really bad and you'll go straight to hell if you do. But if you did, you have everything that you need to improve upon the technique and create this product. If you did, even though you absolutely shouldn't, again, be extremely careful, alright? It just makes filter paper burn fast here in the open. If confined, I don't know what it would do. If you mix it with other fuels, it may not be so stable and play so nice. So, this is, um, you know, I can't find a whole lot of references about this stuff, y'all. So, proceed with extreme caution, because I honestly don't know what will make it very angry if you mix it with it, or what it will be nice and placid about. So, I mean, you know that coffee filters are a good place to start. <laughs> but again, I mean, that's already after I had, you know, rumpled it and gotten most of the material off of it. So, you know... Um, and in fact, the other paper that I burned before this one, to check this one out, actually gave off a lot more yellow fumes, even though it had less of the material visibly on it. So, um, yeah, you're going to want to do some serious, careful experimentation when you're not using this stuff. So, anyway, there you go, peeps. Uh, you know, a, a, an interesting bismuth-based oxidizer. I'll tell you, these bismuth oxidizers, man, they're no joke. So they're, you know, my little gift to you. If you like that, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, oh well. Um, subscribe, comment, share the video. And until the next one, y'all, I will see you later. That's pretty goddamn neat. Here it goes, yay. Look at the heat being given off by that crystallization process.